Welcome to Mac Connections, the podcast. Keeping connected and looking after yourselves is so important during these changing times. We trust the following conversation will provide some helpful guidance. If you have any concerns, please get in contact with staff in the Year 12 team. We want to be able to provide all the support we can. Our patron, St. Mary of the Cross MacKillop, wrote in 1875, May God bless and keep you and give you courage. We acknowledge the traditional owners of the land on which this podcast is recorded. We pay our respects to their elders, past and present, and to the Aboriginal elders emerging. Episode 22, Preparing for Success in Exams. Here is your host, Director of Wellbeing, Mr. Andrew Exton. Welcome to another edition of the Mac Connections podcast, and we've got Joe Parker back with us. Well, believe it or not, Joe, we've actually managed to navigate a week or so of school back on campus. And the good thing that, as I look around, I think most of the students are really appreciative of of being back and have probably got back into their routines pretty quickly. But just as we get back into the routine of actually going to classes, Joe, we know around the corner that there are exams for many students completing VCE. And I think what we wanted to do today is perhaps try and give students some practical tips around how to um, how to prepare and be successful through this period. Because I think what tends to happen is every teacher and every parent is telling their kids they've got to study hard to be successful. And often we assume that students know exactly what that looks like and they know what to do. So we're going to go through some practical ideas and some information today around study and study skills. Um, first thing I wanted to ask you, is it, is it reasonable to think that for many students, even though they've been through six years of school, then when it comes to studying for these exams, they sort of almost feel like they don't really know how to go about it and they don't really know what to do. Is that reasonable to think that we've got many students out there that are not quite sure how they're gonna go about this? Absolutely, most definitely. And it's something that I hear students telling me a lot because these exams look and feel a little bit different than anything else that students have been working on before. And the message is often consistently given to students I hear to be told to study more or study harder, but that's all very well and good until you start to think about what studying more or studying harder even means. And without any additional support around that, it's just a directive or a notion or a context. And that's where things get really tricky. The thing though, is that even though exams look and feel different this time around, and so it's easy to feel like we're starting from scratch, when we start to break things down a little, there's actually so many different strategies and things that all of us can do and do do often that can help us the same so way. I, right so now. I wonder, Joe, have you got a, have you almost got to work out the purpose or the aim of what you're trying to achieve before you actually even decide how you're going to go about doing it? I think to me that some students look at a hell of a lot of time that they've got and they're looking at how long many days they've got until the exam, but they don't really know what to do with that time. Is it, is it about having a plan? How important is planning out the time that you've got or that you're going to give towards your exams and your study before you even start actually studying? Absolutely, having a, the plan is the foundation and having a dedicated plan means that we can focus then all of our brain power on the content rather than trying to navigate our timetable at the same time. The other thing about having a plan though is that it helps us hold space for more than study. There's this idea that studying harder means or studying more means studying better and that's just not necessarily the case because if we're spending all of our time studying and leaving no time for things like exercise, sleep, socialization, like downtime, then our brain is actually going to show up functioning nowhere near as well as what it could. And so the plan or the study plan allows space and time to think about, yes, big pockets of time studying, but also pockets of other things. Too. So in simple terms for Joe, what are the mechanics of a plan and what does that look like and how would I go about 
coming up with a plan that might work for me because I, I get a sense that all of these need to be individualized rather than generic because we've all got different circumstances. So for students that are looking to make a plan for themselves, what are the mechanics that they need to, in, to go through and what are the things that they need to include? Mm. Mechanics are really important and you're right, they're individual for everyone. So important factors in putting a plan together, first and foremost are the subjects that you need to make space for and making sure that you're allocating dedicated time for individual subjects rather than just placing study time on a timetable. And when thinking about how to indicate or how to allow time for different subjects, some important things to think about are things like how those subjects are weighted in your overall score, if having a TER is a really important part of this or an ATAR now for you. Uh, also thinking about which subjects you're struggling with the most and allowing more time for those. And also thinking about when you're going to have contact with subject teachers and therefore when it might make more sense to be working on different things. Outside of that though, thinking also about when naturally in the day you work better. Some of us are early birds, not me by any means, but some of us work really well in the hours before school. Others of us work really well after school or later into the evening. And understanding naturally based on your own body's rhythm when you're able to focus more easily and allowing study time in those brackets of time throughout your week is going to ensure that you don't just show up to study, but you get the best from yourself too. Allowing time for your body and your brain to reset and move between tasks. So having three or four subjects back to back in a, in a study block doesn't necessarily make as much sense as having one subject and then a break and some exercise, coming back and then working on another subject and then potentially stopping to eat or to refuel your body. So thinking also about concentration and the way that your brain works as well as, of course, holding space for other things that we have to do in our lives, like family commitments, work commitments, sport commitments, etc. So you mentioned a plan and we've allocated six hours a day for a period of time leading up to the first exam. And then depending on when we've got exams, we've got periods of time after that. Mm. I get a sense from what you're saying that rather than just allocating a block of time, we have to have an idea as to what we want to do specifically in that block of time. There's got to be a focus on achieving something or getting an outcome from what we've, the, from the time that we've actually set aside. Would that be really important? Definitely. And the clearer you are with those blocks of time, the easier it becomes for yourself because you're not needing to sit down in that study block and then try and decide what it is that you're going to focus on. It's pre-planned for you. It also means that when you show up, you can step into that block of study time feeling a bit more confident because you know the outcome that you're working towards, even if it is just focusing on one particular part of a chapter in, in a text, or it's focusing on one concept that you need to learn or one set of definitions. And then also by allocating specific targets or outcomes to those study blocks, it means that you know when you're done. And so at the end of that allocated period of time, you can step away, either knowing that you've covered everything you intended to, or potentially knowing that there's something that needs to carry over. When it comes to those blocks, I'd always encourage people to start with something that feels a bit easier for you, just to get some quick wins on the board so you naturally start to feel in flow when you're studying, but then to make sure that you move into the things that you're finding hardest because they're the ones that you'll tend to need more teacher support with. And while your teachers are available to you the way that they are, it makes sense to utilise them as much and as you, you can. And Joe, you're in control of the plan rather than the plan being in control of you in terms Absolutely. of there's no, there's no need to feel guilty about changing it or working for a slightly lesser period of time or taking a break that if you're not meeting the plan, you're not going to set the benchmarks that you wish to with regards to achievement and stuff. It's important that you're flexible around what that plan looks like as long as you're still working towards achieving the goals that you want to set. Definitely. And the two things to remember here is that what you're setting up is a plan. It's not a contract. And so as you move into that plan, you might naturally find as you're starting to work with it that it's not working as well as what you thought it might when you set it up. And so you might need to make some tweaks 
here and there. The other thing about a plan is that if, if you find yourself not meeting the targets that you set for yourself or feeling like you had a particularly hard study block and didn't really achieve much of anything, that doesn't mean that you haven't failed at your plan. It just means that for whatever reason, there was something in that block that wasn't working for you. And so you can naturally encourage yourself to reset before you step into the next one. So in terms of the mechanics, having a plan, having a structure, having a focus, I'm wondering... How do you deal with the emotions that are associated with study? That sense of maybe, and being a parent myself and having a daughter that's gone through BCE, almost wanting them to study as much as they can so that they do as well as they want. And sometimes the advice that we're getting or giving may not be as helpful. So how do you manage, how do you know, students navigate, you know, parent parents and support and how do they even manage what what others or what do they see others doing or hearing how much others are studying or how many practice exams they've done and and all that sort of thing how do they manage the emotional first of all we'll talk about external emotional influences parents friends how do they manage that mm. comparisonitis is rife at this time of the year, that notion of comparing ourselves to others and trying to decide how well we are or aren't doing based on what we're seeing from other people. And the thing about comparisonitis or comparing ourselves in that way is that the second we do it, we then hand all of our power and joy and progress over to something well outside of ourselves. So the first thing here is really doing our best, even though it sounds hard and feels hard sometimes, to walk our own path in this because we are completely individually. And so trying to run by somebody else's study routine or do the same number of practice exams or whatever it might be, isn't necessarily going to be the best combination for us anyway. And so focusing on what they're doing takes away the opportunity for us to find what helps for us. And if that means that you have a little bit less contact with some people in your life or you turn off or step away from your social media in a way that you never have before or you study in a different space where you are away from other people then that's okay right now because that's just about right now not about forever the thing with parents or guardians or loved ones is that they want us to do really well in life and i find this now even as a 35 year old woman all i need to do is mention something that i'm excited about to one of my parents and they're suddenly almost as if I'm back in U12 all over again. <laughs> They're starting to give me advice around how I should be doing it and going about things. And what I've tend to find over the years is that people just want to have a role. They care about us, they want us to do well, and so they want a role in our journey. With parents when we're studying, if we can tell them what's helpful for us, like, hey, could you please remind me when I've been sitting down for half an hour so that I can stretch, or, I'm going to focus on this in this next block of time. Can you please ask me how I went afterwards? Or it would be really helpful to have some food at this time in the day. Is there a way that we can get together for that? Or I can contact you for that at some point. Something that they can physically do to contribute to our work without having to naturally try and find a way to contribute themselves. That role tends to calm things right down. And so telling our parents what we need and giving them permission to contribute towards that in some way can help them then feel like they're working towards the common goal rather than just flooding around trying to find something that's helpful. So we've managed to establish a structure, a, a structure around our study in terms of a plan and we've managed to set up a structure with regards to how our parents can positively support us and some of the strategies that they can use. I wonder how do, it would seem to me that study for everyone would bring a sense of confidence that you are going to do well, that you've done the work that, you, that you've needed to do well. But it would seem to me that for everybody, regardless of the amount of study that they've done, there's going to be a degree of um, nervousness. We might call it anxiety with regards to the prize or the outcome and the unknown that is exams, the actual preparation for exams. I wonder if we've managed to keep to our plan and we're happy with where we're at and we've prepared well, but we're still going to have those nerves and that uncertainty. How do you manage 
those periods of time leading up to exams and even all, almost on the day in terms of ensuring that your level of, you know, the chemicals, the way that your body works, how, how to give yourself the best opportunity to, to reward the work that you've done through a performance that you want to actually produce on the day. And that's not a given. No, no, not at all. And there are two parts to this. One is around understanding the role of nerves and what that actually means. And then the second part is around what we can do to set ourselves up for peak performance in an exam. With fear, often we're used to giving it a negative rap and suggesting that it's a sign that something's going to go wrong or that we aren't prepared or that we're at risk of a crisis or that we don't know what it is that we need to. But more often than not, fear is purely adrenaline in the body showing us that we care about something and we're invested. Sometimes it means that there's a threat there, but short of something trying to physically attack us, more often than not, fear is a sign that we care and we're worried. We want things to go well. And so a little bit of fear and some nerves is actually a really good thing in this environment because it shows that you're present and they're completely normal, for lack of a better word. In working with it, it's about how you're going to use that adrenaline and that energy. And so if you are feeling nervous or fearful, it's helpful to let that adrenaline out of your body in a way that makes sense for you. It might be stopping and going for a quick run or doing some exercise or playing an instrument or sitting with your dog, just letting that energy out of your body because without it, you're going to cycle around. And in the same way that you have a plan for your study, it's also really helpful to have a plan in the lead up to your exam on exam day, almost like a pre-exam routine that will involve things like drinking water because when we have more water in our body, our brain is lubricated and we're able to think more clearly. I'm eating a really good breakfast or lunch before exam so that we have physical energy in our bodies. For a lot of us, we'll have different ways of feeling grounded. And so I'd encourage you all to think about a particular grounding technique, be it listening to a certain song or sitting on the ground for a while or feeling your bare feet on the grass outside your house, just something to help you feel really grounded. And then also reminding yourself that you have put the work in. Because if you have put the work in and you've been studying and learning and asking questions about the things that you're getting stuck on, your brain is going to have subconscious knowledge that's far bigger than anything you can physically remember in any moment. So there comes a point where we also need to understand that we've done everything that we can and it's okay just to trust ourselves to get the job done too. So Joe, jo, if, we're, if we're going to summarise now and we're going to give maybe three or four or five or I don't know how many you would think are key building blocks for this period of time, if we're going to look to summarise our little chat and, and take and have some takeaways that are really easily accessible for the people that are going to listen, what would you say they would be in a minute or so snap, snapshot of what we've talked about today so far? Mm, things I've spoken about and also a couple of things that we haven't. First of all, have a plan. Have a plan and give yourself permission to change it if it's not working for you at any point in time. Remember what you do know rather than just what you don't, in that remind yourself there are plenty of things that you've learned already and they're in your memory bank. It can be so easy to focus on what we don't know and stress out about those few things. There is so much information that you do know and it's important to remind yourself of that. Don't compare yourself to other people. Focus on what's helpful for you and what's working for you at any point in time. Space. Find yourself study spaces that help you feel confident and that are clear of clutter and, if possible, private. To you so that you have your own space there. Sleep, water, food, so important. And finally, celebration. You've been working really, really hard for such a long time now and as well as preparing for these exams physically through study, it's important to prepare for them through actually giving yourself a bit of rest and relaxation too because ultimately that's going to help you show up better on the day, not worse. So there are the takeaways and I think they're they're reasonable, they're all accessible. I mean, and I think that's the thing, Go, that these are egalitarian and accessible takeaways and things that everyone can do regardless of past performance or even expectation for how they're going to go. And I think it's about, it's about making sure that we have that mindset around personal best rather than equating it with 
a performance in terms of a number because we're all we're all going to get different numbers and different results through this process. It's just a matter of them hopefully being as close to personal best as we possibly can. Joe, thank you so much. We're going to come back. We'll probably do one more. And I think this is a really interesting topic to finish off because we've gone through this cycle of talking about different topics for our students. But there will be a point in the next six weeks where our students will technically no longer be secondary school students. And they'll be ready to move on to what is the next phase. And I think what we want to do in our last podcast is look at that transition from a certain way of being, and that is a school student for six years, to something a bit different, which is a, a person that's looking at the options beyond school. So we'll come back and talk about that um, in our last podcast. Thank you very much for uh, coming along and, and chatting to us again, Joe. And we'll be back in the next week or so with another and our last podcast. And we hope this is benefit to our students. And importantly, I think from both of us, we wish all of them the best of luck through what has been a really challenging year that they can get come somewhere close to achieving their personal best. Most definitely. We're thinking of all of you as you're out there studying and preparing and personal best is the absolute best that you can strive for. Yeah, Thanks. You've got it. Thanks, Joe. That brings us to the end of this episode. A reminder, if you do need any help, if you have any queries, questions or concerns, please contact a member of the Year 12 team. Be kind and look after yourself.